Hi everyone. So I know a lot of you are brood lords, and uh, I'm not gonna put anyone on the spot here. But how many of you have not made use of the armory that much? Is, is anyone here not comfortable with anvils? I think I've used them twice. Cool, cool, yeah, cool. I haven't used them much. I don't use them. Okay, so, I haven't so, used them at all. Yeah, so we're gonna go over anvils today because I, I anvils. Here, here's the thing. I use the whole armory. I have access to orbital strikes. I have access to citadels. I have access to everything. Swarm lords have access to all of it. Anvils are the most useful thing in our arsenal, but hands down, in my opinion, they're, they're more useful than an orbital strike. They are more useful, especially the heavy anvil. If y'all will come over to me, we are going to do some anvil practice. Uh, can you go over, like, what the armory should look like? Yeah, one second. Stop shooting, we're on the same side! Like, how much of each thing crafted, I mean? Yeah, ideally, we uh, we like to have uh, five or six heavy envelopes at, at any given time. We want to have uh, one Citadel Shield, one Steel Rain, one Colossus, and one Orbital Strike, and then anything else is just kind of extra, depending on the needs of the order above that's using it. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch of light anvils for us to practice with. And here's the thing that I want to impart to you, Brood Lords. We generate a ton of the green resource. More than we can possibly spend. And unless you are trying to kill our green supply, like, like literally just spamming stuff you don't need, we will never run out of it. So feel free to experiment with this stuff, especially with the light anvils, because they're cheap as hell. So what I'm going to do... Sometimes is, you can get tuned out late night, but otherwise... Yeah, sometimes you can run into some trouble, but most of the time, if you need an anvil, you should use it. Uh, I use heavy anvils all the time for, for good Sunday spot. And what I'm about to do is show you the most important spot on many bases, which is up in this big-ass tower right here. So if you all will just stand with me right here at the base, because we don't want to uh, get in any, each other's way. And if you hit the M screen, you will, one, see that I'm still talking, because they added that feature finally. And two, be able to see the little circle of the, of the tower that we are in. And within that circle, there is a tiny rectangle gray square. So if I right-click directly in the center of that circle, go down to War Assets and then click Light Anvil. Oh, here comes a Light Anvil. Now, obviously, I wouldn't be using a Light Anvil for this, but this works for a Heavy Anvil. Uh, you would want to do a Heavy Anvil for this situation, but Light Anvils we can afford to lose here. For the so, blop. If this was a Heavy Anvil, I would literally just go into it, pull a Sunderer, and then you can deploy it right here in this tower. And then you just have a nice, safe spawn inside of a tower. And this works at every single tower like this that you can find on any of the maps. And they are very common. Is it a bit tricky to get in? Because it looks like it's kind of tight for a heavy angle. Oh no, is it quite it, easy? It, it, it's, it's tight, but as long as you right-click dead center, yeah, someone else is practicing over there with it. But come, go ahead and come back out, and we're just going to do this one at a time, other than whoever dropped one over there. So, uh, Niku, since you said... Since you asked the question, I want you to go ahead and do it now. Okay. Would, all you gotta do is just right-click right into the center of that rectangle, and yep, there it comes. And, uh, I, 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 uh, asked, I can't remember who it was, what's the rules with assets, uh, with, um, anvils, and he said, whatever you use, just put back. Yeah, whatever you use, replace it. Yeah. And also, who's dro whoever's dropping light anvils all over the place, quit flexing. <laughs> this is a practice. There we go. Now, Curl, would you like to try? Sure. Just right-click right in the center of that. And drop a light anvil. There we go. Now, go get, go fetch yourself a flash. Do you have to be in the hex to drop it, or can you be anywhere? You can drop it from anywhere. So you can drop it from outside of the hex, but you will not see the icon show up on the map. So don't trick yep. yourself thinking you need to pull a second. Yeah, exactly. You can see enemy anvils, right? Like when they're coming in, like the symbol on the map. Yeah, you can see it, but it's not collared, so you you don't really know if it's friendly or, or hostile. You just know it's an anvil. Okay, anyone else? Who who has not dropped an anvil? Who that wants to try now? 
I haven't done it. Alright, Trollo, are you a broodlord? <laughs> Maybe. Let me check. You are... Not... I don't think. Let me see. Does no, it, you're does not. Does it mean I can't do it? Or I don't know what it means. It means uh, that that's what your rank is in SKL, but if you want to try, feel free. I will very temporarily promote you to Broodlord. Sure. There you go. Now, whoever dropped that anvil in the tower, please go fetch it so Trollo can do it. Guys, quit dropping anvils. We're doing it one at a time. It's Crawlo, by the way. <laughs> Crawlo, gotcha. Yeah. Alright, pull that anvil, pull back. Well, all you gotta do is right click on the center of that gray and drop a light anvil, and HCBM has to be out of the way. It'll. This is an important thing to note, people, is that if there's anything in the way, it will not drop the anvil. So if there's a person standing there, it will not drop it. It just slaughtered that galaxy behind us. So I can only do nice. medium ones, is that okay? Oh, no, because people keep using the light ones. Guys, quit pulling light anvils. There, I made a couple more. They, they make it like one second. There you go. And then once it lands, it, it hasn't landed yet, that's just a template. Oh, okay, sorry. There you go. And then you go into it, cool. access it. Yeah, got it. Alright, pull. go ahead and pull on back. Has, has anyone else not dropped an anvil before once to practice? I'll try once. Yeah, go ahead. Are, are those boxes destructible objects? Yes. Yeah. yeah. They are very destructible. You do not want to drop them in a hot environment. Okay. The ha aircraft, mm -hmm. tanks, uh, small arms fire will kill an anvil pretty quick. Oh. I'm small arms of fire? Even on heavy? I I'm not 100% sure. I think I think LMGs can, like just like, like a Naganada or something, kill an anvil. But usually, something will have some kind of explosives to hurt with them. Okay, right, so now I am going to drop a heavy anvil just to kind of show you guys what the mass of a, of a heavy anvil looks like in that hex. And something else I'm going to do uh, is deploy it from not the map screen. So what you can do is you can hit the Alt button to free up your mouse, and then literally just click on your mini map and, and pull war assets from there as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's yeah, useful if you're trying to run, run somewhere, somewhere and put, put a war asset down, down while you're running, running to it. it. Yeah, so that was me just freeing up my mouse and using the mini-map to drop this heavy anvil. And as you can see, it's it definitely takes up a lot more space inside the elevator shaft, but it still is a... It still fits, and you can still pull the Sunderer. And you can kind of you know wiggle it around if you want a better spot. Like, generally speaking, you want it to just kind of be straight facing where the rear is facing the stairs. But I wouldn't, I usually don't worry too much about it. And if you can serve out a stealth Sunday, then, and, and no one saw you deploy it ahead of time, now you just have a nice hidden spawn where people can spawn and either go down the stairs into the fight, or if the elevator is nice and tactical, they can spawn and just go straight up the elevator. Pretty nifty, right? Can you put yep. odd beacons in this little shaft? Yeah, sure. Yeah, watch. Cease fire. I fight for Bonu. If my squad beacon wasn't beaked, uh, wasn't being bugged, but yes, you can put squad beacons here. Yeah, I would have tried it, but mine's bugged too. All right, so oh, works. there you go. Yeah, so what I want from you all is that, especially the brood lords that have the uh, the permissions and um. I'm sorry, what was it? Was it Crollo? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and Crollo, if you want the ability to drop anvils, all you have to do is sign up for the Officer Academy on the SKL Discord. That's the only... It's, there's no test or anything. Use, there's just a form you have to fill out. Okay, cool. Thanks. I didn't know. Okay. So, what I want from you all, the Broodlords and above, is that you need to start practicing your, your anvils. Anvils are very important. Uh, heavy anvils are one of the most important 
assets in our entire armory, and our and green comes super. So I want everyone at least once a day, just in like a low, you know, late night or a low income, like a low uh, resistance environment. Just practice dropping an anvil somewhere neat. I, I do it all the time. I'm just thinking this would be a pretty neat place for a sunderer, and then I drop an anvil just to kind of see if I can fit a sunderer there. So I would ask you all to check that out. Roof sky guards and triple stacks are amazing. Yeah, and you can drop a medium anvil. Uh, I guess just to go over it really quick, light anvils are obviously for all these flashes that we got piling around. Medium anvils are for uh, ants, lightnings, and harassers. And heavy anvils are for sunderers and mag riders. So you can, in a pinch, use like a heavy anvil or a couple medium anvils to kind of refill a uh, armor column a little bit. You know, kind of refill your losses a bit in, in the build if you don't want to. But those can be a drain, so just be careful about that. Usually, we use heavy anvils and you on. Does anyone have any questions about anvils in specific? Um, this might be a dumb question, but should you ask your platoon lead uh, you, before dropping an anvil? Like, no, you, the anvils are not something that you have to ask permission to use. Um, yeah. That being said. You must abide by the rules of replace it. If you, if you spend something from the armory, you have to replace it. Uh, if you spawn a, a bunch of heavy anvils and do not build more, and we have zero anvils whenever a platoon lead needs an anvil for a spawn or something, then the fault lies with you. So as long as you are replacing what you are purchasing, then you are fine to experiment as you will. And I encourage you to experiment because it's very it's a very useful thing. I mean, I use this tactic right here all the time, but you can literally just run a, run a router, not run a router, but like run like an ejection seat scythe to a base, put your beacon up for your squad, anvil in the Sunday, and all of a sudden, after like 15 seconds of flight, you just have a complete spawn package set up, just because you threw it, flew a scythe somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna start doing that. Yeah, because I was, I was hesitant to use it, because I don't know like how much supply, and you know. No, yeah. I, uh, you, you, yeah, you guys as Broodlords are given access to the anvils and the discounts because the anvils and the discounts are something that we add infinitum. Like, I, I would challenge you, without being a troll, to actually realistically use all of the green most of the time. Because most bases give green resources. The rare bases that give blue and the center base that gives red, purple. Green is, is super common for us. I'm telling you, once you get past 2 a.m., you can definitely run out. So don't, yeah. once you, if you get below 2:50 and we have no income, it might We're be time to take a, take a break. Yeah, just be just be responsible with it. Oh, hey, can someone res Dark Phoenix with any medics? Yeah. But 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 if it's like uh, prime time and we've got like some something in the area of like uh, like plus 20 income, yeah, we're never gonna run out. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, yeah, wow. we, you, you, it's possible, but as long as you're responsible with it, you'll be fine. Now, something else I want to go over is going to require us to get back into some galaxies. I think an Alpha Gal is still nearby. Bravo Squad, you just want to redeploy into a, a Gal or a Valk. We're going to we're gonna be going into a war zone, so there might be some fighting uh, in our future. But we're going exactly to Platoon Waypoint. I'm going to go ahead and get a Valk up for us, Bravo. Alpha Squad can just get back in that gal. Bravo Squad can uh, redeploy into some Valks or some gals. And also have or a uh, gal, and we are going to go to Tomb Waypoint Tower at Bastion. We're going to try to avoid the fight, but we'll see. Uh, let's do the Valk, just because I think Frozen's going to be getting us somewhere away from the tower. I have a question about anvils. Valk's up. Yeah, what was the question? So who can actually consume the anvil once it has landed? Like anyone, okay. any friendly. Okay, any friendly. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So uh, I mean, there there will be plenty of times when I'm leading a platoon where I will just drop an anvil and tell someone to pull a Sunday from it. Generally speaking, I think it's a good idea to just do all the work yourself, pull an anvil, and and get to it yourself. But if you can trust your platoon or trust your squads to pull what you want from the anvil, then you should be fine to just kind of drop it wherever it's needed. So, can enemies take the, uh, the anvil? No. En enemies cannot pull from the anvil, they can just destroy it. Okay. And blueberries? Yeah, blueberries can as well, and any friendlies can can pull from the anvil. Three guys. Yeah, there's an enemy Sunday right here. I, I knew there would be one right here. 
Okay, now we can get a beacon. Up. I just kind of, I, I kind of wanted to guess the most, the the most obvious spot. Put beacons up for your squads. I wanted to guess the most obvious spot here for, uh, for Burrito, can you there to be a uh, Sunderer and just kind of kill it. Bring the Sunderer down, please. Thank you. There's someone on the tower shooting us. Dude, it's yeah, smoking there is too. absolutely a fight going on here, <laughs> we just pissed oh, yeah. off by killing their Sunday. <laughs> she practiced the OS. Is it, is it dead yet? It's not dead, it's on fire though. They yeah, get beacons up. Beacons. There we go. Yeah, just get that, get that kill because I also want to go over something else with this tower. Beacons up again. They're repairing it. It's done. There we go. Well, let's just wipe out their infantry. Alright, get reses out. Alright, one of your broodlords, uh, I don't know, Kura, drop a heavy anvil right where we just killed that one, around the yellow smoke. Enemy galaxy in the area. So, bravo, all the beacon is up. If you guys had trouble getting here before, you can uh, join us here. Get move beacon, out Bastion. Yeah, galaxy pilot, yeah, move out of the way. There it comes. I went ahead and got one making, but yeah, get in the habit of rebuilding what you uh, make. So when it lands, assuming it lands, go ahead and access it and pull a sunderer. And yeah, get it in a nice juicy spot and deploy it. Now I wanted to show this spot in particular because it's a spot that a lot of new players do not know about because if you really look at the map, we are very far away from the Bastion. The reason that this is a popular spot is because if you can deploy a Sunday into this gravity well on the... Yeah, there it goes. Now let's, all of us, let's go to the roof. Yes, later you stay right there. Everyone coming to me at the roof. Now when randos spawn in, or the platoons spawn in, they can go to the top of the elevator shaft and they can take this jump pad, which actually leads us right to B-point. And you see, now, now we're just you know, a hop, skip, and a jump away from B-point if we were attacking or defending the base. So we, we just took away a very good B-point attacking location and provided a very good B-point defending location. And we're not really here to do any fighting, so let's just uh, go ahead and pull back a bit. Yeah, and I wanted to go over this with you all and kind of just show that the, yes, people put put sunders in places like that, and they're very useful because there are just so many interesting places that you can find on all of the maps. Like that's just one of many places on the map that you can find that are just really neat places to put spawns like it, it's not readily apparent that just some random spawn on the tower all the way from B point of the bastion is one of the better spawns on the base so I, I advise you to experiment to look on to kind of learn the bases and uh, just kind of get a feel for what you prefer or like what's kind of spawns you prefer because ambles really open up a lot of opportunity does anyone have any questions or thoughts comments Uh, what's the medium anvil? What does that contain? Is that harasser? Yeah, harasser, lightning, ant. Okay. So it's pretty. It's pretty good for base building. It's pretty good for just getting a random sky guard out, uh, like Astari said a little while ago. Um. Yeah, like there's one right there. <laughs> Astari pu pulled the sky guard on top of this tower. They're good for. They're good for a number of things. The but the 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 most applicable use of I of any of these anvils for a pl for a platoon or a squad lead is the heavy anvil for a sunderer. Yeah.
And if you're in a contested territory, just be aware that it will get shot down. Because people can see it on the map. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Okay, so let's go yeah, ahead and uh, uh, can hit uh, flying units and any unit, so don't get underneath it when it's landing. <laughs> Just yep. see that galaxy just get whipped. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Let's go ahead and start redeploying. I mean, it'll start, it'll start if you want to, you know, chill out in that sky guard for a bit longer. I don't really care. But uh, anyone else, yeah. well, let's go ahead and just start redeploying real quick. We're gonna just go go back to the warp gate because I just want to just want to talk about something uh, that is not going to require us to do anything. I think I actually. So we managed to push all the air off of this location, which is really funny. A question about the discounts? Sure, I was getting ready to go over the discounts. What, what would you like to ask? I was wondering, when you do a discount, does it apply for blueberries too? Yeah, it applies for all members of your faction at that base. What if the terminal gets hacked? Uh... I'm not 100% on that, but I, I do not think it applies, because it, it, it checks friendly. Okay, cool. But I'm not 100% on that. So, just briefly, while we're here, let's go over the discounts. If y'all go to the Faction Armory screen, which is under out Outfit, right in the middle, there's a big word that says Armory. You click on that, and you scroll all the way to the bottom is where we get to our discounts. Discounts are cheap as hell. Uh, it says they cost 10 green, but it's 10 for 5. So do not make discounts when there's when it's at 59 or 58 out of 60. Just wait until you can make them in pods at 5. And what the discounts do is they just they I mean it does what it does what it sounds like they 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 give a thirty percent discount on light vehicles mobile armor support light aircraft heavy aircraft uh, and then the infantry health regen the phalanx auto repair and the phalanx combat are pretty self explanatory over 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 each of them um, generally speaking just use them like tic tacs like uh, when i play when i am in a platoon whenever i call for people to pull aircraft whenever i call for people to pull sunderer or armor i always will say i'm putting discounts up at this base let's pull sunderers from here let's pull Valks from here discounts are going up brood lords freely just throw discounts around for your platoon just don't you know, don't don't right click all over the map and just give discounts for no but it's always a good idea to let everyone know I want you to pull ba uh, you know, vehicles from X base and for Y reason. And the reason is A, we need you there, and B, you're going to get a discount if you do. do. So make sure you use your discounts. How long did the uh, discounts last for? Um, oh, man, it's been so long since I thought about that. Minutes. Yeah, I think, it's like, I think it's like 15 minutes. It tells okay. you if you uh, scroll over it, like if you mouse over 20 it, minutes. Like... Or 20. Oh, uh, yeah, and you can stack them three times for an hour. Yeah, you can extend, yeah, and if you ever right click on the base and, and go to like give like support mm -hmm. discount and it says ex and it says extend, it means there already is a discount there and you can extend it by another 20 minutes. So you can extend it all the way up to 60 minutes worth of discounts, which you know, 20 minutes is more than enough time for, for whatever you want to do in, in most cases. Um, yeah. Yeah. For context, um, when you're building those discounts, you get five discounts. That's why they're so cheap. Yeah, they're built in pods of five, so don't, yeah, always always build them when you know there's go, you know, the five will actually get something done. If, for instance, someone already started a discount building for the light vehicle discounts when there was a, when it was at 58 out of 60, so we're going to be wasting three of that because it does not go up to 63, go up two rather than five. Are the infantry health regions worth it to put on a base you're defending? Yeah, I mean, go ahead and throw all the all okay. the all the stuff on the base you're defending. It's not, it doesn't hurt, so it, 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 it's perfectly fine. Generally speaking, the vehicle discounts are better. Infantry health regen, what's that exactly? Like, is it just inside the base to get regen? It's um when uh, you haven't taken damage for a little bit, you have auto health regen, so. It's the old biolab buff, and you might think it's the same nanite regen for vehicles? For is, infantry. So is that in the whole hex? Everyone just has regen? Yeah, yeah it should be in the hex. Yeah, yeah it should be in the hex. Uh, it, it, but it's only when you're not in combat for like 10 seconds yeah, it will yeah, start yeah. to kick in. Just like when you haven't taken health point. damage, uh, if your only shields get struck, uh, you also still keep regen and health. Yeah, so it's just like the implant. Yeah. 
All right, any other questions about discounts? Uh, you use them freely. Is there any indication on the map that there's a discount um, on, like, in progress? Uh, yeah, if you, uh, here, go ahead and hit the map screen and hover over the Amherst Western Warp Gate. At the very bottom, it'll say Active Modules. Yeah, you can also see the Bastion has a bunch for some reason, too. And also, sometimes it, it glitches and doesn't show all the model, modules. If you just right-click on yeah. the hex and... If you right-click on the hex and go down uh, to module assets, it'll show you. If it says extend, then that means there's already a discount on the base. If it says install, that means that it would be new. Okay, but there's no way of like actually telling without right-clicking. You can so use the active module. module install, and then yeah, you have to right-click. Yeah, you just... hover over the hex. Yeah, you just have to hover over the hex, but oh, it doesn't so like you a. Can also tell that, and it'll tell you that. modules are active. Yeah. If you're in it too, you could uh, pull up your scoreboard, and it's there on the right hand side. Yeah, yeah. If you if you're in the hex, just pull up the scoreboard. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, comments? Um, I question that because I'm in the bastion, and on the map there are tons of uh, modules, but on my scoreboard there are no modules. So yeah, I me. Mean, I I'll be honest with y'all. I uh, I usually just right click on the hex and see what I would what I would be able to extend to know exactly for sure, because going off of the information by hovering over or checking the scoreboard is not a hundred percent bug free. Okay, yeah, that makes sense because a bit scuffy, right? Yeah, it's all it's always been this way. All right, any other questions before I move on to another topic? I just want to say, try and get harassers everywhere you can. You can get bulldog harassers in some really deep locations. Yeah, you can get you can use anvils for some interesting stuff. Uh, I usually just use it for infantry, or not infantry, but like squad leading or platoon leading. But they're also useful for like armor columns and stuff. Yeah, you can you can get like harassers up on the balcony of tech plants and. <laughs> yeah, and if you ever got, if you guys ever want to know some interesting spots for like sunder replacements or whatever uh, I, I would be happy to show you uh, we've we've done a lot of experimenting over the years there's some interesting places to anvil on sundays uh places you've probably seen might have suspected but it's always a good idea to just kind of check around ask around do your own experimentation All right, now before I go on to anything else, does, what, what, does anyone have any request for anything? Anything that they want shown, anything they want go over? I can go over crashes or valve drop, valve drops like in person or anything like that. Any requests for training before we move on to something that I choose? And feel free to type in platoon chatter to me directly if you have if you can't speak. I got a question for you. So, how does SKL handle like removing people from platoons if they're not following orders? Like, hey, that's a that's things? a good question. And literally, what I was about to talk about, if no one said <laughs> anything. All right. So, what we're going to talk about now uh, is the problem person problem. You often, in one form or the other, it, it doesn't have to be someone you know coming in cussing everyone out. It doesn't have to be someone being like the worst in the world. But you will run into problem people if you're squad leading or your platoon leading. And something that I want to remind you all is that as long as you are being fair and reasonable, you decide what is right or wrong in your platoon. SKL supports its platoon leads and, and squad leads. And if someone is making you uncomfortable or not listening to you and you decide to remove them, remove them and you will not be in any trouble whatsoever. That being said... Do not arbitrarily remove people for no reason. Now, I'm going to go over a few examples here. The most mild version that you will come across in your time are, let's just call it the gatekeeper, gatekeeper problem. You'll run into someone who thinks they know best. You'll run into someone who thinks that their advice is the best advice in the world. They will continue, continually suggest things aggressively over and over again regardless of how much you were trying to reassert and 
I'm going to tell you, this will happen. It probably already happened to many of you. You've probably seen it happen to others. It's perfectly fine to give them a warning. It's perfectly fine to DM them and say, please, like, you know, uh, can, can you cut the chatter down a tiny bit? And it's perfectly fine to, at some point, just remove them. I know that a lot of you guys probably think that removing or banning someone from a platoon is... You know, for people that come in, stay in the N-word a lot, or like just trying to say something that to get themselves banned, like trolls or whatever. It's not. It's for anyone who's disrupting the platoon. As long as you are fair with the people, give them a chance to tone themselves down, you can do whatever you like. Like, at a certain point, your hands are... I had to kick someone from my platoon yesterday, but like, it, it happens. It will always happen. It doesn't matter how long you've been playing the game, it doesn't matter how respected you are. You will get someone that, regardless of how fair you feel like you're being, will have to remove. Well, does anyone have any questions or comments regarding this topic? Does that include, um, like, removing swarm lords and stuff? People higher rank than you? Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay. the, like I said, I'm not saying that it will not come over, come into review if you have a problem with a swarm lord and remove them. They might complain to Elite Command, and it might get some kind of review. But I promise you, as long as you did not just arbitrarily remove someone from the platoon for no good reason, we will tell you, we will back you. Like we're on your side to do things as you. Hey, this is my platoon. I'm doing things my way. I know you don't agree with it, but this is how we're going. This is how we're going to do it. And if you don't like it, you're free to leave the platoon. And if they do not quiet down. And remove them. It, it, remove me. I won't care. Like, if I am, for whatever reason, being disruptive, if, if I feel like, if you feel like I am talking over you and you DM me or ask me to call to quiet down and I don't, remove my ass. Like, it, it, this is not a democracy. Like, if you are platoon leading, you are putting a lot of responsibility on your head. It, it is stressful a lot of the times to be a platoon lead. Uh, it, hard. And it is not something that you should have to take any extra stress on yourself to do. So if anyone's giving you a problem, and it doesn't matter if they're you know Uber themselves, if you do it the right way, if you go about it the right way, and they still do not heed your requests, just remove them. You know, give them the, give them another chance tomorrow. But you know, there there is no there are no exceptions to this rule. Any other questions? I think uh, I think two of you spoke at the same time. Uh, a question with squad ban. If you squad ban someone, are they kind of banned from joining your squad in general, or does it refresh when you start up a new squad or platoon? It's 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 just for that game session in that squad. So if, whenever you start up a new squad, they will not be banned anymore. Okay, thank you. So one thing you know for us commenting on removing people too. The removing people who are not where the platoon is can be very beneficial to the rest of the platoon. You shouldn't really feel bad about that, in my opinion. Because there's two things. If you remove some people from your platoons, you can always ask your squad leads to recruit people who are locally. They're like medics and engineers that you need, just by Q-spotting and inviting them. But also, when people go on the squad finder and they're looking for a platoon, they, they tend to look for the cohesion being high. And if you co keep your cohesion high, you'll get more players who want that experience of an organized gameplay. Yeah, now, I will say that uh, we have had problems with people in the past that just kind of remove people that aren't in the same hex as their platoon, like without warning or whatever. I I'm not going to say you're going to get in trouble for just kind of removing freely, but I would very highly suggest you all to give people like a five minute warning or to remove them for not being with the platoon. Uh, it's perfectly understandable if someone spends five minutes at five minutes at the crown or the bastion when hasn't even touched the bastion to go ahead and remove them. But it's another thing to just remove people for just not being with you in any given moment because they might just be AFK for a minute, otherwise have been with the platoon, or they might be taking a router base or something. If you can put a five minute warning out, I promise you, a lot of people will say, "Hey, I'm building a base," or "Hey, uh, I was AFK. I'm going AFK. Please don't." Care. So. Just pretty much with everything in regards to problem people, just be fair. As long as you're being fair and you're giving people proper warning, you'll be you'll the, like we will back you regardless of what you do. Any other questions or comments? 
The one thing I was I, I was also just going to add is that the way you remove people from Latoon, it can be this really awkward thing. Uh, you can really alleviate a lot of the stress of that by making it more of a positive than a negative. So what I always will do is I'll say, well, Alpha 1, 5, and 7, I'm going to let you go as far as guys find a squad closer to where you want to fight. That way you're getting better squad spawn logistics, your lives, things like that. You don't want to make it this negative, it's my way or the highway thing, because it does, you basically you're avoiding creating any negative energy for the people who say that way. You're so much nicer than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I know... About morale. Yeah, I mean, I know some of us are rougher around the edges than others, and I'm not asking any of you all to change who you are or change anything about yourselves. I'm just asking that if you choose to represent SKL by, you know, seven other people, that you at least do the proper way. You don't have to be like, you know, wring your hands and be like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm going to have to remove you, uh, but have fun elsewhere. You don't, ha you don't have to, like, coddle them or anything. You do need to give them proper warning. They can always join back when they're ready to play with the squad, too. Yeah, that, that's what I say. I say, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, remove the people of the Bastion. You all, you all have fun with your farm and rejoin, rejoin the platoon whenever you feel like rejoining the platoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, literally, the uh, one giving one-on-one -on -one therapy for everyone you ki he kicks. I don't know what you're doing with your life. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, any other, any other questions or comments regarding problem people? Nope. Alright, and I would like to go ahead and, and, and cap off the, the problem people conversation with just a brief explanation as to SKL's rules in as, as so far as platoons go and I know that there are plenty of instances of these rules being broken so don't worry too much about it but we do not talk politics real world politics in SKL platoons we do not allow hate, hate speech we do not allow racism we do not allow sexism we do not allow any of that kind of stuff I don't care if it's the most funny mentally handicapped uh, joke in the world that person is removed from the platoon, or if you know them and the, and you know that it was just them being in something in bad taste for a good reason, give them a warning that this type of stuff does not fly. We we do the SKL platoons are not a, a place for political talk. They're not a place for racist or sexist sentiments. And if you require someone of higher ranking to log on to you know back you up, I'll be on Discord. You know, feel free to DM me or ping me or any of the other Abathurs or Swarm Lords. Uh, SKL is all about making a good place for our, platoon, our platoons. It's it's about content creation. It's about having a safe, cool place for 48 people to hang out. It's not about the platoon being you know derailed by one person or two people just being obnoxious for an hour. Alright, unless anyone has any last questions or comments, I'm done with that topic. Cool, cool. Alright, anyone have any requests for anything? Otherwise, we will start wrapping this up, I think. Yeah, we're, we're almost at the hour mark, so does anyone have any have any requests for anything quick? We can go over, I don't know, beacons, valks, galaxies, whatever. Harasser racing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if Burrito, if you missed who I am, but I'm Prozen. I'm the sweaty tryhard. <laughs> I, uh, I, have, I have a question. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Slater, you want to go ahead and ask? Right. Um, Bastion pulling. Who has permission to pull Bastions? Like, how does that work? Anyone can uh, request a Bastion pull. You just have to request it in the event scheduling channel in the Discord. Is there still a form you have to fill out for that? No, I think you just have to ask for it in event scheduling. It's the, I think it's just been taken over by OSN. I don't know if Horus is still around, but I think you can confirm or deny that. I've got ammo for you here. Oh, there you have it. Yeah, I know the Discord's bloated, guys. Like, uh, there's nothing I can do for it. That we're, there's like 3,000 people in it. Uh, it takes some getting used to, but there are some useful channels in that Discord. <laughs> um, yeah, I think if you are a Bird Plus, um, the... Uh, and scheduling thing is place to post it if you're not or just yeah I know for you all it should be like right below outfit command 
if that helps. Yeah, if you're not um, just a Nag and Abathur or something, they should point you in the right direction. Okay, and I think Crowo had a question? Yeah, um, what is the main purpose of squad leads, if that's okay? Yeah, the squad leads, uh, and this is a very all-over-the-place kind of answer, because we don't have any hard requirements for our squad lead. At bare minimum, the squad lead is the someone who holds the squad lead position and opens the squad for the PL. Um, at maximum, the squad lead is a leader of a mini platoon of 12 people. And, and what I say by that is that some people just want to chill. Um, we, we've been there plenty of times. Uh, Blade has done this before. But if you just need a Delta squad lead and no one's like jumping forward, and you just say, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take Delta lead, but I, I'm really kind of just on the chill, so don't Squad, Delta Squad will kind of loosely do what the platoon lead says, but it's not going to be a cohesive, uh, you know, unit. The opposite is someone who takes a squad and turns it into a mini platoon all of itself. Um, I don't know if any of you have run with me when I've squad led before, but like people like me and sometimes Blade and Horus, um, we usually try to keep the squads a little bit tighter together. You know, actually, kind of like do some squad tactic. Uh, if we're giving a jo given a job at a base or to go take a base, we usually are a little bit more cohesive than the other squad. And all of that just comes with the same kind of charisma that you need to learn to be a platoon lead. Uh, I see squad leading and completely interchangeable. Uh, a squad lead is just a platoon lead of 11 people, where a platoon lead is a leader of 47. So, as a squad lead, you are you exist to do the will of the platoon lead while also maintaining your own will and your own objectives. Ideally, I don't. Um, this is just my opinion, but squad lead. If a platoon lead says go here, kill, kill everybody, the squad lead say how. Yeah, that, that's uh, how sapiens says is exactly true. Like yeah. You might go the split peak pass, and they might say, and the platoon leads might say Alpha Squad, you hold A point, and then they put the Alpha Squad waypoint on A point, and then it's Alpha Squad's squad lead to decide how an Alpha Squad holds the A point. Are we just putting the whole squad on the A point itself? Are we splitting the squad among between the second floor and the first floor, or are some of them going to be outside skirmishing with sniper rifles while the rest stay back? What's the composition between medics, heavies, NG, all that stuff? Are we pulling a couple maxes? All of that is within the purview of squad lead, but it's not a hard expectation because we know some of you are just on the chill, and if you're just holding the position of squad lead so that the squad actually can func you know, exist, that's perfectly fine. But if you want to be a good squad lead, what I'm doing is what you should be doing, or what I'm saying is what you should be doing. Bear in mind, the platoon lead will also have um, their mind on a lot of, of in a lot of places. They, it's their responsibility to take a look at the map in general. Sometimes that um, that means they can't micro everything. As good squad leads will basically handle that side of of things. Yeah, exactly. The platoon leads are usually pretty uh, pretty busy, so squad leads, yeah, you are. And this is what I say a lot of the times, especially when we talk in officer general. It's just like, if you are not the platoon lead, and if you are not uh, a squad lead or whatever, you are still a member of the platoon. You were setting an example. Like, I know, um, where is he? Yeah, Pizza the Hut right here. I've never seen him squad lead or platoon lead or anything. But he's always a vocal member of the platoon. He always calls out his beacons. He always offers any fights. He Q spots his Sundays. He lets people know where things are, and he's never. And I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but he doesn't really lead squads very often. He is a quality member of a squad and a quality member of platoon just by participating. So you do not have to be our pizza. You. No, I just I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, right, no problem. Pizza. Yeah, no uh, problem. And, and and I just want I just want everyone to know that you do not need to be the gold star to be one of the primary members of a platoon, like participating, running routers, squad leading, uh, call, doing call-outs, making sure the squad has a beacon up. We all are 48 people that are contributing to something that is more than the sum of its parts. Okay. So, does anyone have any other questions or comments regarding that? Oh, I think Curtis said something in platoon chat, and I don't think about it. Uh, yes, yeah, so Swarm Lords also make sure beacons are up, rallying your squad leads and making sure they're with the platoon. 
Uh, HCBMs is one of the most fun things to do as a squad leader is when the platoon leads once a once a once a fact acting a fast acting fast. squad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You've done that for me, JP. Yeah, and like each of the squads is going to be different. And like, and and I know some of you have will agree with me here when you when we say that this game could be repetitive, but we go from alert from alert to alert to alert uh, on the same maps. You know, there's only four maps. We we cycle through the same maps. We fight the same enemies. It can be repetitive. What makes it not repetitive are the memories that we make together in our platoons with our squad. When someone says, you know, Bravo Squad, Best Squad, that is because their squad achieved something together. That was also... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've had that before. I, I, I ran a Delta Squad a, a couple months ago, and uh, actually it was probably more like a month ago, one of Blade's platoons, and my, that Delta Squad was practically a platoon in itself. We were doing max crashes, we were doing steel rains, we, we were doing gal drops, just, just the 12 of us. We weren't even really participating with the platoon anymore because Blade was so confident that we could get the, the job done that we just whatever we wanted to do. And like, you can do a hardcore, sweaty Prozan squad, or you can do a chill squad where you all are just kind of goofing around and having fun and doing your objective. As long as you're Relax. creating memories... As, as long as you are participating, as long as you all are, you know, coming together as a community, like, th this is what this game is best at. The, the, this is why we play this over a lot of more popular games. Yeah, and speaking as a platoon lead, if you're going to take a squad and you want to do that style, like uh, Prozone's talking about, right? You know, feel free to speak up and say, hey, I want to run that, because I'll ask, at least when I'm platoon leading, you know, I'll ask the other people who are there who wants to run that style, and I'll put all the players who want to run that style in a squad together, so you can create, you know, those memories for all those people and get to be very combat effective. Yeah. And I know a lot of my answers are, like, all over the place, and it's because I don't want to, I don't want to, to, to put you all into a box. Like, you are not frozen. Like, I, I, I understand that. I prefer... Sweaty platoons. I I prefer I prefer calm discipline. What was that, communist? I said you just talk to yourself in third person. Yeah, well I know. Uh, like I I run sweaty squads. I run squ sweaty platoons. I like calm discipline. I like this and that and this. You are not me, and I and I don't want to give the me as a question. So a lot of the times I'll give like a a, a answer that's all over the place because you can run a casual squad. You you can run burrito ops where you're doing harasser mm -hmm. races. You can do you, can, uh, you know run a Kura squad where everyone's just having fun and laughing and, and objectives. Do it however you want to do. It. As long as long as you're having fun, as long as everyone in your platoon is having fun, you're doing you're doing it right. Yeah, you called your casual Kura. So one question I have because I, I haven't done this because I don't want to like interrupt the other platoons, but if we wanted to do like like. You were doing one the other day, I think, Prozen, where we want to do, like, a smaller squad, right? And there's already a platoon up. I've really kind of hesitated to do that because I don't want to potentially take people away from that platoon, right? Who might come and, you know, join mine. Or something more organized than the main platoon's doing. Right. Um, Actually, this is something I've been talking to you guys played a bit. Um, Prozen, if you want to say what you want to say, I'll go. Go ahead. I mean, the best thing I can tell you is just to do what you want to do. I mean, uh, I'm trying to be very delicate here when I say that people do play this game, or people that play this game, some of them do have very easily bruised egos, so I'm not going to say that you that someone might not be angry that their platoon's getting skimmed people from, but do what you want to do. Like, I, I don't think about that kind of stuff. Like, well, we, we usually have more than 48 people online, so I never feel any kind of guilt for setting up something secondary. Yesterday, when I ran that platoon, it started out as a squad because I just wanted to make a router base and kind of chill, and it ended up being 48 people. I'm not complaining, but I never at once thought maybe I shouldn't do this because I'm... Like, do what you want to do. It's a game. Have fun. Yeah, it's something I've actually been talking to um, VS Blade a bit about was running something along the lines of like an Echo Squad, um, which would be a squad outside the platoon, as you just described, Viper, so that whoever the primary platoon leader is can still get their 48 people of mass, 
um, to throw at a point, and you can run a specialized squad that doesn't pull away from the raw numbers that he can throw at a point. Um, something I actually had a question about is how would you manage the logistics on that? Because you would obviously have two, quote, platoons, unquote, working really tightly to each other, and that would either clog up command chat or be very difficult to keep them working together because obviously they don't have tied comms. I mean, I would just use command chat. Yeah. I, I can't imagine that whatever you guys need to co like to communicate back and forth would clog up command chat that bad. But in, I would in literally call like every Sunday, every router. Like I'm talking that tightly, like as if they were a squad of a platoon. People could always mute you. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can't you can't flood command chat with kite costs and updates on stuff. So yeah, I, 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 that's I, why I'm concerned about using command chat for that kind of an echo squad style. Yeah, I, I would advise you to to either keep it brief in command chat every now and then, or to use Discord. Yeah, I mean, if Echo Squad is exactly where the platoon is, where they need to know every call out, they aren't they aren't really necessarily so far away that they would just not see it on their map anyway. Take some ammunition. ammunition. I mean, if you're calling out every little thing, right, and it's across the map, it's not useful to that platoon lead. But if you're right next to them, they'll see it on the map when you Q spot it. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think a lot of it is just coming down to the, the to another training that we need to do at some point. I'm not saying now, but we really just need to kind of like have some kind of sync on what is in qualifying as calm discipline, because calm discipline is definitely a problem that we have. Um, in a situation like this, this story, I would say ask whoever is the main platoon leader if they want to get into a Discord channel, voice channel. To just kind of be able to at least communicate with them or just content yourself with the Q spots like Viper said if you're if you were if you know you were with the platoon that you were supporting and you were Q spotting and smoking Sundays then they know what they know what you're doing if, if a Sunday shows up if there's smoke they they know what you're doing if, and if you just keep the occasional talk in command chat at, at, at occasional and conciseness then you will be in sync with that platoon and just kind of wordlessly be cooperating. Yeah, it's something that would be really easy to do in VS Blade is leading, because he's just streaming, so you can be like, oh, hey, now I can see all the comms that are happening in the main platoon. <laughs> but, yeah. uh... No, and via VS Blade yeah. stream, I, 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 I have the half reason I watch VS Blade stream is just so I can kind of have like a pulse of what's going, like you know, on of what's going on. I've a, yeah. I listen just to kind of see who's talking, who's doing well, who's doing poorly, what's how the platoon's going. A lot of times I do it even when I'm not on planet side, just because it's it's kind of like a good way for me to observe things. Yeah, you you get the continent map on your second monitor twenty four seven. Yep. Alright, any other questions or comments? I feel like I feel like the conversation there went pretty nicely. Uh thank you. Yeah, thanks, Prozan. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thanks for thank doing you. the late night one. I mean I'm a night owl. I'm gonna be up for like seven more hours, so this is this is this is midday for me. <laughs> Maybe not do a late night one next time. <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I plan to do these every now and then and like I don't talk about this a lot when I'm leading platoons or squads, but I mean, when, when we're leading, like when I'm leading and you guys are in my platoons, feel free to ask me questions then about what I'm doing, like my rationale or whatever. And I'm example of the other platoon leads. Same thing with Blade. I mean, I know some of you uh, have learned a lot of stuff just from being in Blade's platoons. And this is, this is like experience does, is, is the most important thing. I can stand here in the circle and talk forever, and I know you guys are learning something, but you'll learn more just by doing things. This is why I really want you all over the next week to drop one anvil a day to just get comfortable with amp with the heavy anvils, especially. So just remember that for all of you broodlords, uh, to drop an anvil at least one a day, get some practice in, mess around with them, even if it's in a ridiculous position and you find out you could have you couldn't have even deployed it anyway. Just just mess around. Like that's what we all did at some point. Alright. It's just green resources, we can always make more. Yeah, green's easy to come by.
Yeah, thank you. Thank you for taking uh, the teachers. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Slavic? Some guy named Slavic just sent me a question. Is he in this platoon? Can he hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, hey. Um, it's... This training I'm doing right now is more just kind of like a very casual, like, TED Talk type training, so there's not really a ton of material on this. Um, that being said, in the SKL Discord, you all can expect uh, a Broodboard Armory uh, document to come out very soon. I give you guys an idea of what we want the armory to look like and what you can realistically do in a given day as far as uh, expenditure is concerned. That's something that Avocado is working on. His name is Avocado, not Avocado. Uh, so, And that will be out sometime in the next couple of weeks. So being mindful of that, but as to the question that you just asked, Slavic, no, there's not really any material on this. I'm kind of just kind of just riffing, just talking about random topics. All right. Dropping bars. <laughs> Drop bars. And uh, we do have an SKL Discord world where we do have a lot of documentation up, just not anything super specific. Feel free to check the guides on that. And if you want to join the outfit, it's as easy as going to the, art the outfit section. Or probably the first one. For joining the outfit? No. Yep. Okay. People are literally auto accepted. Hold! Let me write Yeah, you need a KD at least 3.0, otherwise you can't. <laughs> no, SKL, oh. SKL is all about its inclusivity. We, 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 we say no to nobody. I mean, we will remove problem people at some point, but we accept everyone. Our platoons are always public for a reason other than the age. But 90% of our platoons are training one. Because we just we want to help everyone. Proxy. Yeah, HK is not hard to get into either. But every, I mean, my trainings are always public. Our trainings are always public. Our Discord's public. Our outfit is public because we are all about helping the community, and we're not here to you know put a gate down for people can't cross. But with that being said, uh, Horace, do you mind throwing a link up for the to the Discord to Lavic? Thank you. That being said, uh, the training is now over. Thank you all for joining me. we got 48 minutes on this alert if you all want to participate. I'm going to be in the original Discord call we were in a minute ago, uh, or I guess an hour ago at this point, for any, you know, if anyone just wants to chat or ask more follow-up questions in an unofficial manner, feel free. I'll be in there. Yeah, Kurt, I did it, like, immediately. <laughs> But thank you all for joining me. I hope this was informative, and we will be doing more of these late night trainings as you know I'm available. Huzzah! Go team! Thank you. Thank you. Yep.